Welcome to the Dalmatian coast of Croatia for this new season of Europe Now. What do young Europeans expect from Europe? Have the new generation really turned their backs on the European project? Well, I'll travel across the continent and give young Europeans a unique chance to talk to their EU MPs. They share their fears and hopes for the future. Well, let's start here in picture-perfect Orebic. We're in the south of Croatia, a former Yugoslav Republic which joined the European Union two years ago. And let's meet Adrian Radovic, an up-and-coming star who makes French patisserie in the region. Claire Williams spent a day with him. Dobro. Super. Since he started working at this bakery, Adrian has forgotten what a lion feels like. Every day uh, I start at 5 o'clock in the morning. Half French, half Croatian, Adrian grew up in France but spent summer holidays on the Dalmatian coast. He studied patisserie in Marseille. When he moved to Orobic two months ago, he accepted the job with a condition. His boss get hold of the hard, dry butter he needs to make real croissant. Um, this is a uh, French butter. My boss um, found it in uh, Zagreb. Um, before Croatia was in Europe, um, we couldn't find uh, this kind of butter. And... and the boss is pleased to have the only French patisserie maker in the region. He has finished a very good school, I think, in, in uh, French. And he knows much. Adrian brings some his new, new uh, system work. And also, Adrian has uh, learned some, something what we do here. Eight hours of work later, and Adrian heads to the family vineyard in the Dingach region. It's like Bordeaux uh, for France. We have uh, Ostup and Dingach in Croatia. Five years ago, the Radoviches employed local experts and reopened their small vineyard after a 30-year break. But they haven't found a buyer for their upmarket wine. It is hard to export this wine because every sale, salesman uh, wants uh, large quantities. The wine isn't selling, but Adrian's croissants are a big hit at this cafe in Orobic. Uh, so Adrian, as you see, we sold all the croissants, so maybe we should make a bigger batch for tomorrow. Okay. Adrian looks after the bakery, vineyard and family holiday home. But hard work has its rewards. It's a success, yes. Uh, not only boss are happy with that, but uh, customer uh, too. Adrian's next goal is to turn the house into a restaurant before his 27th birthday. Hello, Adrian. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Christophe. Now, I believe it's already been a very long day for you. You had to wake up at 4 o'clock this morning to go to work. Yes, I used to do that in France too, so it's not really a problem for me. It helps that I love my job and I work in an incredible place. As you can see, Arabic, the Dalmatian coast, it's beautiful here. Now, your mother is French, your father is Croatian. You grew up mostly in France, but recently you chose to move back to Croatia. I could earn twice as much money in France, but I didn't come here for the money. I came to learn the language. When I'm in France, people call me the Croat, and when I'm in Croatia, people call me the Frenchman. I feel as French as I feel Croatian, and I feel European as well. Was it difficult for you to find a job here in Orebic? It was difficult because here in Croatia people earn most of their money during summer by working in tourism. They have to work seven days a week, even up to 70 hours a week. I wasn't prepared to work that much. I came to learn the language and I wanted to learn it in the right conditions. That's why I had trouble finding an employer who would let me have one day off a week. In the end, I found a job here in Arabic. I'm very happy because this is where my father was born. So Adrian, where are we going next? Now we're going to the island of Korchula. I like spending my free time here to relax and get a change of scenery. It's the island just over there. Yep, just over there. Let's go. Let's go. Menezorom prate tamburaji. Prate mene, prate moju dugu. Do 
dok ja idem svome zaboravu. Korčula is a compulsory stopover for cruise ships, and as you can see, there's a lot of tourists here today. Now, you know a lot of young people here in Croatia. As you know, 50%, uh, roughly 50% of uh, those aged between 15 and 24 are currently out of work. I guess the mood must be quite gloomy among young people. A lot of young people leave Croatia to find work. Croatia needs young people to work in manual occupations. In France, that kind of work is often looked down upon. But to be a good craftsman, you have to work with your head as well as your hands. Croatians need to move forward and not just expect Europe to give them money. They have to change how they think about work. In the bakery where I work, they've been using the same recipes for 20 years. Perhaps it's time to think outside the box and try to meet the expectations of our international visitors. Well, Adrian, before we travel to Zagreb, the capital of Croatia, where you'll meet one of your EU MPs, and you'll get a chance to ask him everything you've always wanted to know, let's watch our next report on the losers and winners since Croatia joined the European Union two years ago. That's a report brought to us by Alix Le Bourdon. <laughs> It's a stressful start to the day for Snežana. She runs a small business making honey-based products. And she's about to launch this new range of cosmetics. It's like we're thumbing our noses at the financial crisis. There was less work, so we said we need to do something new. Maybe it's not the right time, but we'll see. I hope the market will reward us like it did with our other products. EU funding made the cosmetics line possible. But for the products to sell, Snežana needs to convince the distributors. She's meeting one of her most important clients who stocks almost all Croatian pharmacies. The meeting went well, the distributor is interested. A small company from Croatia, now it's possible to make the, the, the business on the whole market of the European Union. It's an easy way to go out. Snežana is also in negotiations with a British distributor. She hopes to start exporting by the end of the year. EU membership hasn't been a success everywhere. On this island, with a vowelless, hard to pronounce name, the part time fishermen aren't happy. Since January, the EU common fisheries policy has banned them from throwing their nets into the Adriatic and using more than 100 hooks a day. Stanko turned to part-time fishing when he retired. He used to sell to seaside restaurants. Now, with a limited catch, he's lost that income. We couldn't live off it, but for people with small incomes, it helped. We could make between 120 and 280 euros a month. Now the EU has ruined all that. Since January, Stanko has been looking for a new way to make money to boost his 500 euro monthly pension. In the meantime, he started swapping fish for olive oil and meat. A group of ultra football fans gathers outside Maximir Stadium. They're known as the Bad Blue Boys, but they've not come to watch a Dinamo Zagreb match. Akcija! A Serbian Croatian production company has asked the Bad Blue Boys to star in a film set in the early 90s. <laughs> Croatia's film industry has been booming since EU membership, with an investment going up from 3 to 11 million euros. We had a continuous stream of good movies, but not, um, not in number big enough and not with the promotional strength really to impose them to bigger festivals, as we can do it really now. The buildings still show the scars of conflict. But this war veteran says the biggest scar for him is in his heart. 24 years ago, majority Serb Yugoslav forces put the town of Vukovar under a three month siege. Today, a new law means Cyrillic translations are obligatory on official signposts. It's too much for this war veteran. Franjo can't stand seeing the enemy's alphabet in his hometown. The people who burnt our homes, raped our women and sent our soldiers to detention camps in Serbia, 
They can now walk freely in the streets of Vukova, and they're not being judged. The veteran has been in trouble with the police since he tore down several bilingual signposts. At the courthouse, he covered up Cyrillic letters with the Croatian flag. Improving the integration of minorities, including Serbs, was a condition for Croatia when it entered the EU. Vukovar's deputy mayor, a minority Serb, says it hasn't worked. It was dangerous for us to hold up entry into the EU, so we gave the green light, even though the conditions were not quite right. We expected things to improve. We have to admit our expectations were not met. During the siege of Vukovar, Franjo lost his father and three uncles. He feels EU minority rules should make an exception for his town. What we want is for Vukovar to be known as a place of contemplation for the suffering caused by the war. It's not about the majority Croats or the minority Serbs. We just want Vukovar to have a special status. Now, Adrian, I'm going to take a bit of a back seat because it's your turn to ask the questions. You will meet Andrei Plinkovic. He's a Croatian EU MP from the centre-right European People's Party. What do you want to ask him? Well, I'd like to ask Mr. Plinkovic how Europe can help young Croatians who are having a hard time at the moment. Good. Hello, Mr. Plinkovic. Hello, Adrian. Welcome. Thank you. So, Mr. Plenkovic, I'm very happy to be meeting you in this cake shop. Patisserie making is my line of work, and I did an apprenticeship in France for five years. I chose a few of my favorite cakes. Uh, lemon tart. It's almost like in France. Yes. I struggled to find a job in my field that meant I could have one day off a week. That's something that's unimaginable in France. I was offered several jobs working seven days a week for 70 hours, and yet nearly 50% of young people here are out of work. At the moment, in the college in Korchula, there are only two students who've chosen to study patisserie making. Well, I don't know how they were able to offer you a job with that many working hours and no days off. That's completely against labour regulations, not only European ones, but Croatian ones too. We'll speak about that afterwards. When it comes to sectors, where there aren't enough trained professionals in Croatia, though, well, I think the problem goes across the board. Our education system should be in tune with the real needs of the job market. We should reform our education system. And I've made a note. In Cortula, there aren't enough patisserie makers. Since Croatia joined the European Union, I've noticed that Croatians care more now about the well-being of tourists than they did in the past. And that's a good thing. You yourself, you've seen progress, that's good. That's true, but we have high expectations for Europe. Young Croatians need Europe to help them move forward. That's true, you're not alone in saying that Croatia's natural beauty is impressive. There's enormous potential, but we have to improve the quality of our services. We have to move, we have to push further forward than we have done so far. You're a member of the Croatian diaspora who's come home. I like that. Since we entered the EU, migration is going in both directions. Young Croatians are not only leaving Croatia, but some Europeans, half Croatian like you, are coming here. That's positive. I know that in France, young entrepreneurs get help in starting businesses. What about in Croatia? 
The European mechanism known as the Youth Guarantee has been a priority. Unfortunately, we have the third highest youth unemployment rate in Europe after Greece and Spain. 45% of youths don't have jobs. So we need to use European funds. And they're not insubstantial. Croatia has more than 130 million euros at its disposal thanks to the EU. I was warned before I came to Croatia this year that there are big problems with corruption and bribery, which allow people to get all sorts of favors. Is that really true? I would say that it's true we had a corruption problem, high-level corruption, which was very bad during the last decade. But really, the justice system proved that it worked. There were no exceptions, and there was a politics of zero tolerance towards corruption. But the mentality has to be changed from the highest to the lowest level. If you are approached by someone who asks you for money or a favor, don't hesitate to go tell Croatia's institutions. They will react. Thank you for speaking to me and answering my questions, Mr. Plenkovic. Thank you very much, Adrian. I'm very pleased you've decided to leave Marseille, for this specific time period anyway, and come to Orebic to help Croatia's economy. You're also helping at a local level by adding a certain French touch to the region where your father is from. So how did it go? I am happy Mr. Plenkovic played the game and answered my questions, even if, like all politicians, he kind of avoided the actual questions. I expected that. I hope that in the years to come, Europe will help Croatians, because they deserve it. Well, I want to thank you for your participation in our show. It was a great pleasure to meet you. And I want to wish you good luck with your patisserie. Thank you. And thank you for watching the first part of Europe Now. We'll turn just after the news break. We'll meet Carla. She's a young mother, young lawyer, in about 10 minutes on France 24.